Now cyclones come in three stages as tropical cyclone, severe cyclone and super cyclone. Now these cyclones that come with a speed of 74 miles per hour or below are tropical cyclones. But those that come with a speed of 75 to 120 miles per hour are severe cyclones. Now those that come with 120 miles per hour and above speed are super cyclones. So cyclones as meteorologists define are organized body of clouds over large water bodies. Cyclones, hurricanes and typhoons are one event with different names depending upon the location. So regarding the northeastern Atlantic region, we have hurricanes, but the northwest Pacific region, we have the typhoons, and the South Pacific and Indian Ocean region, we have cyclones. Now cyclones are actually originating over large water bodies where the air pressure is very low and temperature is above 26.5 degrees Celsius. It is believed that they die out when they run over land because of buildings that come as obstructions, but that is a misconception. Actually, the very source of moist water warm air dies out or becomes unavailable when they run over land. So we just saw that cyclones, hurricanes and typhoons refer to the same event but they all have different names depending on the location. So cyclones generally originate in the South Pacific Ocean or in the Indian Ocean region. Now these cyclones usually occur over large water bodies like oceans or seas where the atmospheric pressure is very low and the temperature is above 26.5 degrees Celsius. So these are places where a cyclone originates and then eventually it gets stormy and deadly. Now cyclones can be very very dangerous severely affecting the life and property of people or places over which they pass. Now cyclones beside causing damage to life and property also have a lasting and a negative impact on the agricultural fields and the people who are dependent on agriculture. So here are glimpses of how damaging and devastating any cyclone could be. Now these cyclones have a severe effect on the islands and also on the coastal regions over which they pass. So there are many islands that are sinking due to the strong cyclones or the severe cyclones that have hit or pass over those regions. And this is quite unfortunate because these islands are home to some of the most dependent and vulnerable sections of society. Thus such an event that is sinking of these islands are not only leaving them homeless but also making them refugees in entire new places with no proper economic security. So the islands that are barely above sea level include the Salanamo Island, Kramath Island, Kalong Island and the Burang Island. And the islands that are below sea level are Betet Island and Gundul Island. So these islands are a part of the Indonesian archipelago and they are severely threatened by the cyclones and the rising sea level. The people here unfortunately are exposed to such rising sea levels and its negative impact on their life and property. Fishermen as we know go far into seas and large water bodies to bring fish and other resources for us. Now to take care of them is our duty. So the disaster management team is ever ready to keep the fishermen and shipping vessels away and aware of the upcoming disaster. So if there is any probable cyclone that has been detected in an area, then these fishermen and shipping vessels are provided the required alerts in order to prevent loss of life. So these commanders who are a part of the disaster management team are ever ready as saviors to protect the fishermen from any kind of disaster. Now besides a well-trained disaster management team, 
Planting of trees could also help us reduce the effect of cyclones. So, if we plant the trees in a row over a long distance, they could act as wind breaks against the dominant winds of the cyclones and help us protect the life, property and agricultural lands. So, while that could be done manually by planting the trees in a row, we have a natural coast guard or bio shield in the continent of Asia. So, the mangroves of Sundarbans act as bio shields or coast guards for the southern and eastern coast of Bangladesh and India respectively. So we see that Sundarbans that cover portions of India and Bangladesh are characterized by mangrove forest. Now these mangrove forests have the ability to cope up with the salty water, high tides and small storms. They also can hold back the strong winds and storm surges of the cyclones. So they are natural bio shields or coast guards or protect the people living in the coastal regions of the Sundarbans from the effect of cyclones. So before we proceed with our lesson, could you help me answer this simple question? The mangroves of the Sundarbans act as dash against floods and cyclones on the eastern coast of India. Do they act as bio shields or as shock absorbers or as wind breaks? Well, they act as natural bio shields against floods and cyclones. So there we looked at the devastating cyclone and its effects. We also looked at some of the ways where we could protect ourselves or reduce the intensity of any cyclone. Now another slow onset disaster is drought. Drought as we all know is characterized by water shortage or lack of available water. So drought is the lack of precipitation over an extended period of time. Now this could usually be a season or more. So a prolonged dry period with lack of precipitation that can result in water shortage is called a drought. Now drought can have severe effect on not only agriculture and on economies but also on transportation, energy, public health and climate change. So drought that is a slow onset disaster does give us time to prepare ourselves for the disaster but the effect that it has is very long and it takes a lot of time to recover from the aftermath of the drought in any region. So here are some of the most important effects or significant effects that are a result of a drought. The first one could be water supply. Now we all know that drought is the lack of precipitation and it's characterized by or a result of water shortage. So the lack of water is an important characteristic of drought. So when a drought occurs, it does not only limit the usage of water in household purposes for cleaning, cooking and other things, but it also puts a limit on the drinking water. There are some places or some regions that had experienced drought and there there were times where even natural resources like wells and tube wells were banned so that water wastage could be avoided and people could be provided with just enough water. One of such similar events could be seen in a rural community of California. So in a news article, The Guardian in 2021, the headline read, California is on the brink of drought, which meant that one of the rural communities of California also faced a time where there was a ban on using resources of water from wells. Now, due to extreme shortage of water, droughts can also lead to increased water cost, rationing and the adaption of other such policies that is very very tough and difficult to follow. So water supply is severely affected during droughts. Now other than that another important aftermath of drought is the effect on agriculture. 
now droughts as we know decreases the productivity of land right it does not only affect crops but also livestock and this leads to increase in food pricing instability it was seen that in 2012 drought struck major bread basket regions of the world and this severely shook people across the globe giving them a reality check of how devastating a drought could be now besides water supply and agriculture other effects of drought could include transportation problems and lack of energy availability now regarding transportation we know that droughts leads to lowering of water levels in rivers rivers are one of the most important commercial ways so one of the very good example of such an unfortunate event is that of the mississippi river now the mississippi as we know is one of the most important water system of the continent of north america now due to the drought that struck the united states in 2012 there was a huge strain on the commercial waterway that is mississippi river and commerce was highly affected due to the drought so there's a threatening of commerce on rivers that act as important commercial waterways now droughts as we know are accompanied by high temperatures which can also sometimes buckle roadways and can also lead to the destruction of public transit cables thus transportation is severely affected by droughts now other than that we come to energy now we know that water is a very important element when it comes to the production or reliability of electricity production in plants water acts as a cooling agent and it helps in safe operations so during droughts when there is lack of available water then that increases the concern about the reliability of electricity production in plants hydroelectric power also becomes unavailable during droughts now other two significant effects of drought include public health and climate change now due to lowering of sea level and water level in rivers and due to reduced inflow of water in streams and rivers there is increase in the concentration of pollutants present in water bodies now the intake of this water that is highly pollutant becomes very dangerous for the health of people who are using it for drinking purpose or any other such activity so public health is at risk because of increased concentration of pollutants in the water bodies now public health is also at stake because of the drought fueled wildfires now we know drought fueled wildfires can be very very devastating now these wildfires cause a degradation in the soil quality due to which agriculture productivity is also affected thus affecting the health of people besides this climate change is also one of the most important effects of drought how so so droughts we know reduces the productivity of agriculture lands or any land for that matter due to which the ability of the vegetation to hold on to carbon dioxide is also reduced which adds on to the level of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere Now as I mentioned a while ago droughts fueled wildfires could be very dangerous besides being destructive for the soil quality the wildfires that are induced by droughts also increases the level of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere why because it burns out all the vegetation that was holding on to the carbon dioxide so this increased level of carbon dioxide can eventually lead to global warming which has a bad impact on climate change so we can say that droughts have an indirect influence on climate change so there we saw how droughts can be very very dangerous and devastating with severe impact on people economy government and all other things related to it so we were able to cover a number of natural disasters some other natural disasters also are wildfires volcanic eruptions tsunamis and avalanches 
these have a severe effect on the life and property of people they cause a long lasting damage and it takes many many days to recover from such damages now if we want to retain the magic of planet earth then we definitely should find out more sustainable ways of being prepared against such disasters don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now